Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Love Joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button so that way you can uh, check out the other videos. And if you've been here once or twice, thanks so much for coming back and getting creative. In today's video, we're going to do a really nice beginner painter. So this is good for those of you um, that don't have a whole lot of experience with the painting process. And I fully believe that with more and more practice, you get more comfortable with the process of painting. So that's what these videos are for. For your supplies, there is going to be a link in the description box below. So check out what you need, grab the supplies, and then kind of pick up the video for the painting portion. You're also going to see a link below for a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to transfer their image onto their canvas and not have to stress out about drawing and you can jump right in and focus on the painting process. There is also going to be a video on how to transfer your traceable with carbon paper um, or even graphite paper. When you're ready to take your skills to the next level, check out my online school paintwithlovejoy.com and check out the Paint Your Pet course. Um, in that course you will be painting from your own photograph and you'll learn the value scale of your pet's fur. And the, it's a kind of a basic skill that once you learn that, you can actually apply that to many other creative processes. And when you paint something that you love, you actually put a little more energy into it and everybody loves their pets. So like I said, when you're ready to take your skills to your next level, check out that course and um, enjoy the process of painting your pet. With this video and any of my videos on the channel, you have full permission to switch out colors and make this your own. Just use this video as a base um, and get extra creative with your paintings. So uh, I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. guys it's gonna be another fun painting so grab your supplies transfer your traceable to your surface surface and as always make sure you take your progress photos so what you're gonna see on my canvas is I did go over the traceable with black sharpie marker for those of you that are gonna draw what you see at home those of you using the traceable you do not have to do the black sharpie marker on there so we're actually going to start out with a light yellow, white and yellow as a mixture, and we're going to place this in the sky. And I do want you to apply, apply your paint a little bit thicker um, as we go through the painting because we're going to kind of put a base on there and then we're going to go in with other colors. And if your paint's thick enough, it'll make some of the blending um, a lot of fun. So again, here you can see that light yellow um, filling up that whole top section. And I am switching brushes to do a little bit more control. Um, so we're pulling some of that yellow aside. Oops, actually first we're going to add some yellow to the bottom. And then we're going to put some of that yellow aside and then add a tiny amount of red. We're making our own orange today. And we're going to be placing this right on top of the background. And then we're going to do a little bit of blending. So as you go through the process today, I want you to just observe where I place each of these colors and mimic that to the best of your ability. You can also uh, reference the original Scream um, artwork and change anything that you might want, um, anything that you recognize that I don't add to the painting, full permission to do what you need to. So here you can see where I added some orange and a little bit more red, and then I wiped that brush off and going back with kind of light pressure, blending the two colors together. And you can do the same thing here as I'm adding some white. And this is called wet on wet blending. The base light yellow color is wet paint and then you're introducing new wet paint and kind of mixing them on your canvas. This is one of the very therapeutic aspects of painting. Now if you're holding your breath, laugh at yourself a little bit, take a big inhale, you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for painting at home today. So pause the video, um, take your progress photo and adjust anything that you want in your sky like I'm doing right now. Um, but we're going to be moving into a lighter color next. So we're going to be moving into 
a light raw sienna, and that's going to be white with a tiny amount of raw sienna. We are going very light, kind of creamy color. Again, if yours is a little bit different, darker or lighter than mine, totally okay. You have full permission to switch out colors and change anything you may need. The important part right now is the fact that you are physically and actually painting and going through the process. So again, we're going to be laying that base color, this light creamy color, um, in three different places. And if you have paint that is fast drying, watch the video and then just take this section by section. So if your paint dries really fast, just do that top section at the horizon line fully and then rewind the video and then do each other section um, one at a time. So you are, as an artist, you're always going to adjust your own variables based on the tools that you have or variables that you have to deal with. So we have that base of that light creamy. Now we're going with more of the direct raw sienna and again just placing it right on top of that light creamy base. And just like you did in the sky, you can use that light pressure and kind of blend um, the two colors together. Now we are moving over to our light blue, super, super light blue, and we're going to do the same thing. Basically just placing this light blue on top of the creamy color, light pressure with the brush, and just slightly mix the two. If you are inclined to finger paint and do some of your blending, that's really fun, and I encourage you to do that. But basically, just relax and have fun. Um, this is a very healthy outlet to have. All right, so go in a little bit darker blue, kind of a medium blue, and just go one or two shades a little darker than what you were just using for the light blue. And again, it may be a little bit different than what you see on the screen. All right, another place to pause the video and take your progress photo. You're doing a great job. Um, it does look nice as we start getting rid of all that white canvas space. And we're going to go into blue. We're going to put those mountains in there, um, a few other areas. And I did keep this painting, uh, trying to keep it with our primary colors, our red, yellow, and blue, uh, with raw sienna and white as some extra colors. So with that blue paint, that direct blue paint, you're filling in that whole mountain area. Um, we're also going to fill in uh, the rest of the water area. And like I said before, if you have fast drying paint, um, just take this, watch the video in a couple of sections, and take it section by section. Work at the pace that you need to. And if you need to switch brushes and use the small pointy brush as you come around the face of the screen, um, of the head of the screen, go right ahead and switch out for what you need. So once you have the base on there, we are going back and grabbing that light blue, and same as the other sections, we're just kind of pushing, uh, putting this color on top of there and blending it a little bit with the base color. Now with the darker blue, you will notice that the light blue and even white gets eaten up so much quicker in the dark colors. So the more that you paint, the more you're going to be understanding of um, what happens with the darker and lighter colors. You are building your knowledge each time that you paint. And that's why I encourage everybody to try to find a regular creative outlet for yourself. Because what you learn in today's painting, when you go to paint your next one, you're going to incorporate some of these lessons and comfort level into your next painting. So painting's never about being perfect or photorealistic or recreating a master painting exactly as it is, but it's about painting a little bit better than you painted the last time. All right, so here you can see I grabbed a little bit of black. And just like the other sections, we're placing it on there, blending it with the blue. Uh, we are working with very wet paint. And again, as you do this, you're playing with the pressure of your brush. You're playing with your comfort level. Your muscles are learning a lot right now. And you're strengthening your power of observation. You are observing where I'm placing it on the canvas, or you're observing the original um, scream painting and adding to yours with what you observe. All right, take a deep breath, take a progress photo. You're doing great. You do not have to go as fast as the video. Take this at your own pace. I am using the small pointy brush. We're going back and making that light cream color. And we're going to be putting this on the face of the screen, on the neck and the hands. 
and you can see where I am going right over those traceable lines. Uh, because I did do this black Sharpie marker, um, you can still see some of the lines. But if you have just the traceable on yours, again, you'll just observe where each of these colors is placed. So now making that light orange again, yellow with a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of red. Um, and we're going to put that base of the railing um, that the Scream figure is right in front of. And then we're going to place this a little bit on top of uh, the blue, uh, right below this railing. Again, just observe what you see, mimic it to the best of your ability. You're doing great. Again, remember to breathe. If your hand is kind of shaky as you're going to apply paint to the canvas, that means you're holding your breath. So big inhale, let it out. Um, be kind to yourself as you're going through the process. All right, so once you have those railings on there, we're actually going to go to a dark raw sienna, and that's raw sienna with a little bit of black. And a little bit of black goes a long way when you're mixing your colors. And we're going to go right below. This is going to be the shadow element for each of the railings. Um, so I'm going right below uh, what you just applied a moment ago. And if you have to mix your color two or three times, don't stress about the exact same shade every time. Now I want you to observe the vertical lines that I'm making. Those are the posts. And just kind of come close to where I place them on your painting. You're doing great. And again, don't forget that progress photo, and we're going to make a dark gray. And I pulled a little bit of that black aside and added just a little bit of white, just toning it down. It's still pretty dark. We will be putting some black right on top of this in a moment. Still using that small pointy brush, still breathing and relaxing. I'm really proud of you for painting. And if you've listened to some of my other videos, you know that I encourage you to um, look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. And this is more of the normal viewing distance for most things in life. And if you can kind of get in that groove of doing it while you're painting, it's just gonna improve your painting skills. So again, you can see where I grabbed the direct black, placed it a little bit on the body for this, um, the figure on the screen, and kind of at the base of uh, the railing uh, before it meets the ground. And going back to a dark gray, outlining a little bit of that mouth, and a slightly lighter gray um, for those eyeballs. Again, for this part, I do recommend that you pull up the original painting and observe what you see for the details on the face. Because on the original, I think there's actually a few extra colors in there. And then again, many people make this uh, painting their own. So if you want to change something, if you want more details in the face, if you want different colors, go right ahead and do that. So here I'm using the white, uh, again, light pressure, the paint's still wet, and just kind of changing the shade, giving a few little highlights um, on the left-hand side of the face for the Scream figure. All right, and going back to the dark gray, there were a couple like abstract figures at the end of this walkway on the original painting. And uh, Monk actually uh, painted this as express, uh, expressive art, kind of how he was feeling. He was feeling nature scream um, and his own kind of emotions and stressed out factors uh, just kind of lend to expressive painting. So that's why it is really good to paint when your emotions are high and you feel a little bit better afterwards. All right, so now adding some final details, a little bit of the yellowish orange on the face. Again, I recommend that you pull up the original painting and observe what you see and what you need to add um, to make your painting your own. I'm really, really proud of you guys for painting. And I believe in the original, there is a lot more red in the sky compared to what I put. Um, so again, change based on what you observe and what you want for your painting. I'm just really glad you are painting. All right, oh, for the eyes, I did put little black dots in there for the eyes, and then we're gonna do a little white dot for the catch light. That was just something that I kind of do in my artwork. Um, so again, make the face on here anything that you want it to be. Thank you guys so much for painting with me. Don't wait too long to get creative again. 
And until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you liked how your paintings turned out. As you're uploading your photos to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I can't stress enough how much uh, your feedback, your sharing this with the community and sharing your photos has helped this channel grow. So please keep it up, you're doing a great job and you're getting more people to try painting and realize how much fun they um, have during the process. So keep it up. Um, anything that you'd like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment and I will add that to my production list and get to it as quickly as I can. I am a solo producer here, so um, they do go a little bit slower than I would like, but hopefully we'll be able to bump that up one day. But either way, um, I'm still thrilled with all the pictures and the stuff that you guys are painting at home. So until next time, have a great day, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Thank you.